Welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I've got another awesome video for all you small form factor fans today because I'm going to be building a crazy water-cooled PC, very high-end, into the Raging Tech Ophion Evo Mini ITX case and uh, as you can see I've already modded it, it's got a crazy paint job so we're going to be looking at all that kind of stuff today in the preview of this brand new water-cooled PC mod. So. Stick around if you want to check out all the latest hardware that I'll be putting inside, loads of tips for building high-end water-cooled mini ITX PCs and seeing this crazy PC come to life. Just a preview video today looking at all that crazy stuff and I'll be back with the full video soon where I look at the finished article. For now though, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you are aware when I up upload new videos. There's lots more content coming, mini ITX, water cooling, PC modding, processor reviews, graphics card reviews, all those kind of things, PC build guides, the lot. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to have your support and it just means that I can do this full time and continue to churn out lots of great unique content. First, a big thank you to u2key.com for sponsoring today's Crazy Tech Lab video. It offers a whole bunch of software at crazy low prices and you can get things even cheaper by using the code CAT24 to get 24% off Windows 10 Pro. You can also use CAT24 to get 24% off Office 2019 Pro. Meanwhile, CAT15 will get you 15% off Windows 10 Home. You can also use CAT15 on Office 2016 Pro as well. Finally, you can use the code CAT10 to get 10% off all the other software on its website. So once again, thank you to u2key.com for sponsoring today's video and head over to its website for great low prices on your software. So to start with then, what hardware have I actually chosen with this PC? Well, it's pretty high end, but given the PC is orange, that might give you a bit of a clue as to what's going inside. And this is basically an AMD only build. So I've gone with the most powerful hardware that AMD offers in terms of processors and graphics cards, at least for a desktop PC that is. And that is the Radeon RX 5700 XT, which I have water cooled using the fantastic EK water blocks um, vector water block, which is just an absolutely sick bit of kit. It's got RGB lighting on the Radeon logo, super clean, uh, lots of chrome, lots of black going on there, and absolutely love that water block. So um, I'm gonna be slotting that into the case. Uh, not too much modding in terms of the layout um, because the case is fairly large for a mini ITX case anyway, so plenty of room in there for long graphics cards, uh, mini ITX boards and uh, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, super happy to be uh, doing my first mod with a Radeon card uh, in quite a while and uh, water cooled as well, which would be uh, which should be interesting. And But it, for me, it's all about that water block. It just looks absolutely gorgeous. So on the other side of that thing, is of course the Ryzen 9 3950X, which is AMD's 16 core, 32 thread processor, and basically the most powerful uh, desktop processor AMD currently has. Uh, that's mainstream desktop, of course. It's got Threadripper, but you won't get Threadripper onto a mini ITX board. Not yet, anyway. Uh, I haven't heard nothing about that, but I doubt that's ever gonna appear. Um, so yeah, crazy processor, but because it's seven nanometer, it's more than capable of being cooled inside a water-cooled mini ITX PC these days. So super, super powerful processor and with that processor comes uh, the motherboard of course. And as I said, pretty much any um, AMD motherboard out there is going to be capable of handling, handling this processor. I would suggest maybe going for something high-end along the X470 or uh, X570 route, but I've gone for X570 courtesy of the ASUS ROG Strix X570i Gaming, which is basically my favorite uh, X570 motherboard, and for a couple of reasons as well. That's not to knock any other manufacturers. Uh, ASRock um, has a fantastic X570 board, and uh, Gigabyte does as well. 
and um, MSI have come on song with their B550 offering as well. Uh, so I did have a fair bit of choice out there, but there was there were a couple of killer features here that um, that made me swing for the ASUS effort, which I've got here, and it basically uh, revolves around the cooling. Now, the uh, ROG Strix X570 i Gaming has two uh, MOSFET fans that cool the, uh, the the power circuitry, and that's kind of really important for a Mini-ITX build because you're not gonna be having the same kind of airflow throughput in this in a case like this as you would do in an ATX PC. You know, there are just fewer fans. If you pack it out with hardware, like I'm gonna be doing, there's less space for the air to move around, so it's really important that the hardware can cool itself. And with two small chip, uh, two small fans cooling the uh, the power circuitry and the large heat sinks on the board, that's going to be really really useful. Um, if just on those really hot days, uh, or if you're applying an overclock, uh, boards like this do come into their own. Uh, and hopefully, I can tune those tune those chipset fans down so they don't become too noisy. Um, Another reason I went for this board, and probably the main reason, is that it has a thermal probe header. So that means that I can hook up a coolant probe into the liquid cooling system and have the fans on your radiator and the pump respond to the coolant temperature and not the CPU temperature. Now, that might sound weird that your fans aren't responding to CPU temperature at all, but actually it's the most efficient way to run your water cooling system. For the simple reason that if you ramp up the fans on a liquid cooling system, a custom liquid cooling system like the one I'll be sticking in here, you won't see any any benefit in cooling. Um, with a heat sink, sure, you need to ramp up the fans immediately because there's not that much of uh, you know thermal headroom in that heat sink. It will get warm very quickly, and getting air through it quickly will see a drop in your CPU temperature. Not so with a water cooling system. Uh, for the first couple of minutes of high load, at least, there will be no appreciable difference if you have the fans at maximum speed versus idle speed because the coolant itself is actually warming up and you've got a lot of it in most water cool PCs. So the ability to do that to control your fans from the coolant temperature is going to be really beneficial with this build and the ASUS ROG Strix X570 R Gaming is the only X570 Mini ITX board that has one. So yeah, kind of um, two trump cards there from ASUS and uh, kind of made me swing in uh, in its favour with this motherboard and thankfully if you are looking for a B550 board the B550 um, ROG Strix uh, iGaming board does have the thermal probe uh, the thermal header as well so basically I had two choices just picked this one just because it had an extra fan and it's got that extra bandwidth provided by the uh, the X570 chipset as well so that's the motherboard what else have we got here we have Corsairs Fantastic SF750 SFX power supply. So 750 watts of power, SFX power, um, SFX form factor, and uh, a large 92 millimeter fan. I'm super chuffed that Corsair has come out with these because there weren't too many manufacturers around before Corsair. You know the likes of Silverstone and Be Quiet, but the uh, the power has gradually been ramping up, and I think Silverstone actually has a thousand watt SFX power supply now, albeit SFXL, so it's a bit longer. But 750 watts, way more than I need to cool a 30, uh, or to deal with, not cool, rather, um, to deal with a 3950X and a 5700XT. And I've also got a killer cable set from Cable Mod, which I'll reveal in my next video. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, the black and orange cables with anodized orange cable combs, so it looks fantastic. So make sure you check out the next video. And don't forget to subscribe, of course, because you'll be notified when I upload it. So great power supply from Corsair and plenty of power for this build. And um, what we'll do now is just uh, have a little bit of a break and I will grab some of my uh, liquid cooling hardware and uh, mainly from EK Waterblocks and we can check out that. Okay, so we're back and uh, looking at some of the uh, water cooling hardware going inside this PC. It's crazy that I needed to uh, switch desks uh, and uh, setups just to go through all the all the hardware that I'm actually managing to fit inside this PC. But firstly, there's the uh, EK Quantum Kinetic Reservoir and Pump Combo. So th I love these things because they're uh, super compact and it's kind of like a distribution plate but with a DDC pump embedded into it. So it's fantastic for mini ITX builds. I'm surprised that I haven't seen many, uh, too many other people out there using them. Um, they are pretty new, so I guess that's probably got something to do with it. But as you can see, where I'll be fitting it in this build is uh, up in this top corner. 
and uh, it's basically great because it means that it frees up the entire rest of the PC in terms of reservoirs and pumps. It's very easily mountable. I've just added some uh, some uh, mounting tape on the side of it uh, to fix it in place, and uh, as you can see, it's like super super secure. And um, you can basically put it wherever you want in the case. So the only downside though is if you do have it next to the side window like I've got here, you do have you do lose a few of the ports. Um, so you've got two at the bottom though, so they're the ones that I'm using for the inlet and outlet for the pump and the reservoir. But thankfully you don't need to worry about too, too much about filling it because in a mini ITX build you can kind of fill the PC on its side or something, which is what I'll be doing with this build. The uh, little fill port up there, I can just uh, lay the PC on its side, fill that, and then uh, have the the system bleed itself and away we go basically. So super, super uh, great device from EK Waterbox there and uh, very, very useful for mini ITX PCs where you can't fit the large tube reservoirs and that kind of stuff. So moving on and uh, going all pretty much all EK with this build and uh, next up is the uh, Quantum Series Velocity Waterblock. So this is going to be uh, mounted onto the ASUS motherboard and it looks absolutely great. This is the AM4 version of course with the uh, the socket AM4 mounting mechanism for Ryzen CPUs. And uh, yeah, it looks absolutely great. RGB lighting, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, just looking forward to, uh, to getting it up and running and um, seeing how it performs with the Ryzen 9 3950X in this build as well. And um, that brings me on to a couple of other bits of hardware that I should mention that are going in the build. Not necessarily water cooling, of course, but there is the 2TB Aorus NVMe Gen 4 SSD as well, uh, M.2, of course. M.2 SSDs are a great idea for Mini ITX because it just means that you save so many cables. You know, every single storage device, whether it be a 2.5 inch SSD or 3.5 inch, inch hard disk, you save two cables. So if you've got like two hard disks and an SSD, that's six cables that you can get rid of that you don't have to hook up to your power supply, you don't have to hook up to your motherboard and have them trailing around the case. So definitely go M.2 if you can with your Mini ITX build, it'll make it so much easier. And um, next bit then is the Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB. So I absolutely love this memory. Admittedly, I think the Vengeance, um, the Vengeance RGB memory um, does have a slightly sort of snazzier look in terms of the RGB lighting, but for me, I wanted something bright and punchy uh, to dish out those orange LEDs, and the Capellix LEDs in the Dominator Platinum just simply beat everything else uh, as far as as far as that goes. So, yeah, looking forward to getting this fired up and looking really, really sexy through the side panel on this case too. Whoopsie daisy, and uh, knew that was going to happen. So. Radiators um, in any mini ITX build are going to be a trick um, because you often have limited space, especially as terms of thickness goes. But there are a couple of interesting additions that I've made to this case as well to make that possible. And uh, first of all, uh, not so much a trick this one, but I've gone for the EK Coolstream SE240. Uh, so that's a 240 millimeter radiator from EK Waterblocks, and it's pretty slim as well, as you can see. It's actually already mounted in the top of the case. Um, pretty much your standard sort of 30 mil um, uh, radiator there. And uh, it just means that it's much easier to fit into the case than something that's 45 millimeters. In fact, I don't think you'd even fit a 45 mil rad in there anyway. Now, to make things a little bit neater, what I've actually done is gone for a couple of these babies, which are Noctua's um, NF A12 A15 PWM fans. Now, they're 15 gives you a clue at the end. They are just 15 millimeters thick. Now, these are mini ITX builds. They're, they're just godlike, all right? They give you, um, I've actually tested them myself compared to some other premium uh, full fat, uh, full size 120 mil fans. There's next to no difference. You know, they're really, really good. They maintain reasonable static pressure, uh, great airflow, and um, in pushing air through a radiator, I was actually testing them. They're actually, well, you know, within range of some of the best 120 mil fans out there. And given that they give you an extra centimeter of clearance, uh, in this case, it's meant that I can fit a, f a full height radiator in the roof. And it's also meant that I can do what I haven't seen anybody else doing in the Evo, uh, Ophion Evo, and that's fit a third radiator, uh, sorry, second radiator, third fan, in the bottom of the case as well. So there's a large um, opening down the bottom here and uh, basically I will be putting a 
120 mil radiator in the bottom there, but not any old 120 mil radiator because I have found the XSPC TX series of radiators. Now these things are amazing because they are just 20 millimeters thick. So that's a whole, a whole extra centimeter saving over most other 30 millimeter radiators. And it means that you can get a tw uh, basically one of these radiators plus one of the Noctua fans into 35 millimeters of space. And that's your water cooling sorted. And they come in 120 mil, 240 and 360 millimeter versions. Unfortunately, stock seems to be really low at the moment. So if you're looking at using one, you might have to wait a while or check out eBay or something. Um, but I'm all about cramming as many, as many radiators as you can into a, a Mini ITX PC. It just helps with airflow, it helps cool your hardware, and uh, basically it just removes those upper limits as far as uh, you know thermal, thermal throttling and, and those kind of goes. You, you don't want to be anywhere near that, of course. And just the more radiators you have, the lower your temperatures will be. So yeah, absolutely great stuff from uh, XSPC here. And, um, I'll be putting that radiator into the case uh, in the next video so you can see everything going on. And um, I think that's pretty much it as far as the water cooling hardware goes. I, I will be using hardline rigid tubing, but because of the complicated uh, nature of the build, I won't be doing the whole bending and all that kind of stuff. Um, I did have a go, but just kind of getting it around in you know, places that you can't even see. Um, and you can't fit the tubing to the radiator and stuff with the, you know, with the, with the roof off because the, the radiator mounts to the roof. So to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to use um, just straight runs of uh, EK's uh, acrylic tubing and uh, have that run from component to component instead because that's going to be much easier to work with and what I won't be pulling my hair out trying to trying to create those turns and just chewing through miles of acrylic tubing uh, as I do. So normally I would have probably gone for that and that was my plan originally but it just proved too difficult to kind of you know rooting it you know each tube, uh, each section of tubing was uh, some of them were having six or seven turns in them um, and it was just yeah it was just becoming unmanageable and you mess up the last turn that's pretty much that you know an hour gone uh, in terms of bending and stuff so yeah, Mini ITX, I think it's going to be a lot easier in a lot of cases, especially complicated ones like this, where you've got tubing running from one side of the case to the other, just to use straight runs of tubing. So yeah, as you can see, already looking great, and uh, I will put some videos up of how I achieve the fantastic paint job on there as well. As you can see, super, super glossy, and uh, it's actually lasting really well as well, because sometimes the, uh, you know, the home spray paint jobs don't last that well. But this one doing really, really well so far. So I'm just kind of taking care of it, keeping it out of the way while I uh, build the rest of the PC and sort all the, re all the other hardware out. And uh, yeah, so don't forget to, su to subscribe to my channel and uh, I will be back with the full video, including the completed PC and uh, a full build guide as well. And uh, if you've got any comments on the build, if you want to ask any questions about the final one, do let me know because I will answer them in my next video. And um, also, if you've seen my other videos, you'll know that I've got a crazy Fantex Shift water cool PC. Do check out my other videos for that as well. And I know a lot of you have been asking questions about that. When am I going to do an update? What are the thermals like? Um, what it, what's it been like to live with over the last year? Well, good news for you is that I've got a whole bunch of new hardware coming for it. And uh, it's finally arrived. I had to wait for ages, um, including some amazing new stuff from Bits Power that I really want to show you. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel to, uh, to be notified of when that video comes up as well. It is in the works and it will be here very soon because I've finally got all the parts. So thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and have a good day.